there's been a lot of talk of late of uh, monetary policy failure, the letter that you've written to the government, which none of us have seen. Uh, but I want to ask you if you think on hindsight you could have done anything differently. It's a hypothetical question. Hindsight is always 2020. But do you think you could have done anything differently or would have done anything differently in the last one year? I think we have been on the right path. Okay. That, that is our assessment. I mean, people can hold uh, different opinions. I'll tell you why. You see, the inflation, even during uh, 2020 later part, around uh, October of 2020, inflation had gone up. It had touched 6%. And there was market uh, expectation in some seg uh, segments of the market that RBI uh, will probably increase the rate. There was also, there were people who were saying that RBI should now turn the focus uh, to inflation and increase the rate. But our assessment shows this, showed that going into January or so of 2021, the infl inflation will come down. And indeed, it, it came down. Then 2020, 2021, again, in the latter part of 2021, the inflation was gradually going up. In the February MPC, you know, which was very critical, the inflation projection which we had for that financial, you know, for the next financial year, that is from 2021-22, for that financial year, our assessment of the average inflation was that it was going to be 4.5%. The professional forecasters in the market, their forecast ranged between 46 to about 5.2%. Whatever it is, inflation was going to be around in the worst situation, around 5%. We had done our scenario analysis assuming uh, crude at even higher prices at $95 per barrel, $100 per barrel. And we found that the inflation in the worst situation would be around uh, 5%. Now growth was recovering. We wanted a safe landing of the economy during the year 21-22. So in February, Contrary to, you know, what uh, somebody may say that, you know, RBI probably should have increased towards the end of, uh, you know, uh, around, let's say, December uh, uh, 21 or uh, February 22. Uh, somebody may say that. But the point is we wanted the economy to have a safe landing, the recovery of the economy, the GDP to be above the pre-pandemic levels, and 21-22 uh, growth was about 1.6% above the pre-pandemic levels of uh, 1920. I'm giving a long answer, but no, no, I think it's a it very is interesting necessary. answer. Please go ahead. It is necessary. So economy was recovering. We wanted a safe landing for the economy in terms of the growth figures. And I think today, looking back, it gives us great satisfaction that last year the economy recorded, last year meaning 21-22, it was 8.7%. And for the current year, our projection, current year meaning, you know, 20, yeah, current year, 22-23, our projection in RBI is 6.8%. The National Statistical Office has projected 7%. We will know uh, after March. So the economy has not only landed safely, the economy has resil remained resilient notwithstanding this huge amount of global spillovers which are emanating because of the effect of the war, geopolitics, and the synchronized monetary policy tightening, especially by the US Fed and other, other uh, advanced economies. Inflation, yes, it did go up to 7% after reaching a peak of 7.8% in April, you know, April 22. It has come down. In between, it went up once for 7.4 or so. Now, December figure were released yesterday. It was 5.7. It has come down from 5.8 to 5.7. It's mainly due to softening of food inflation. I do concede that point. But so therefore, looking at this, now, the law mandates that RBI is supposed to, you know, the RBI Act, the law mandates that uh, uh, RBI has to maintain price stability, basically meaning that maintain the inflation around 4%, keeping in mind the objective of growth. And I think we have kept the objective of growth, which had to be given primacy during pandemic times and uh, thereafter. 
we have not lost sight of the need to focus on inflation. So therefore, when the war started and, uh, you know, the uh, international prices of commodities, even the food prices went up, prices of edible oil, prices of cereals also went up because of the war in Ukraine. So we, we did not hesitate to take uh, a decision in an off-cycle meeting last year in May. We were criticized for that. But it was necessary because we didn't want to give a big shock in our June monetary policy. So we split it. We did 40 basis point increase in uh, May and another, uh, you know, we did another uh, 50 basis point increase. So even looking back, I think we have been on the right course. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the earlier uh, uh, theorists of being behind the curve, etc. I think that discussion on being behind the curve is, I think, is over. Okay, that's a long answer. Have we just very long answer, no, no, but no, you I, thong, but it has to be. It had to be explained. <laughs> In this long answer, have you just paraphrased your letter to the government? <laughs> you know, I have said it earlier. It's uh, it's an you know it's a. It's an intelligent guess which everybody can make, and I'm sure anybody else can make in this room. But broadly, yes, I think, in a way, yeah, in a way, manner of speaking, broadly, yes. Broadly, yes. <laughs> you spoke about this inflation targeting band. Would you go as far as to say, given the way inflation is moving and the kind of volatility in prices we are seeing globally, that whole notion of that target ban needs to be revisited today? I would not think so at this point of time. You know, the inflation targeting framework did facilitate maintenance of average CPI inflation at about 3.9% from 2016 when it was instituted, when it started to the pre-pandemic uh, position in February 2020. So for those three years, almost three years, mm -hmm. the average inflation was 3.9%, close to 4%. After the pandemic, of course, the situation changed. Now, we have had, uh, you know, one after the other major shocks, the COVID, then the war and uh, monetary policy tightening, the current volatility in the financial markets, etc. But I think it's too early to shift the goalpost. The 4% has a certain meaning. And also, let me add that our target of 4% plus minus 2% to declare it as a failure, if you exceed that, then only it's a failure. I think that gives us sufficient flexibility in our monetary policy decision making. We utilize this flexibility, the Monetary Policy Committee, the MPC, utilize this flexibility embedded in the inflation targeting framework to tolerate higher inflation of 5%, 5.5%, and even more than 5.5%, up to 6%, because the requirement of that time when we were undergoing the stress of COVID and then the, you know, mostly the COVID impact during those two years, Inflation, slightly higher inflation had to be tolerated because the economy required help. The economy required support. We had to infuse a lot of liquidity. We had to also do a substantial reduction in policy rates. So therefore, the current target of plus minus 2% gives enough flexibility, policy flexibility, to the Monetary Policy Committee. So keeping that in mind, I would feel that the 4% target with plus minus 2% is very robust. In the Indian context, I don't think there is any need for any change.